Britain's hospitality to the 2,000 UNO visitors includes WVS hostesses. They're ready and able to fix the delegates up with anything from afternoon tea to an afternoon at the dogs. With men and women of 51 nations on the books, this is a good place to brush up on your foreign languages. But most picturesque among our guests is the Emir Faisal, representing Saudi Arabia. In his London hotel, a special newspaper delivery keeps him up to date with events at home. On the Emir's left is his co-delegate, Sheikh Waba. While the United Nations go to work in London, discussion continues as to the site of their permanent headquarters. In New York's Hyde Park, home of the Roosevelt family and last resting place of the president, a United Nations building would do honor to the memory of the man who did much to bring it into being. At Central Hall, London, another day brings questions of procedure contested by the Soviet Union. Requesting the postponement of the election of the non-permanent members of the Security Council, Monsieur Gromyko puts Russia's case and draws this forceful reply from Mr. Bevin. I've come to the Rostrum to oppose this resolution for postponement. I regard it as a very dangerous precedent. We are met as an assembly. I think we ought to act as an assembly and we ought to go through the agenda as we agreed yesterday. I think the speeches we've heard this morning proves the imperative necessity to put an end to lobbying and take the vote as an assembly. After warning his listeners not to expect miracles overnight, a statement of the new American world outlook was made by Secretary of State, Mr. Burns. The United Nations must be a cooperative effort upon the part of all peace-loving nations. Fellow delegates, it is our fighting men who have given us this opportunity. A great responsibility now rests upon each and every one of us. Upon the meeting of that responsibility depends the future of civilized humanity. Twenty-five years ago, we in the United States were not fully aware of our responsibility. But with others, we have learned from experience. This time, both the United States and its people are deeply conscious of their responsibility. This time, on their behalf, I pledge to the peace-loving people of the world our full and wholehearted cooperation. <laughs>